Hey guys, my name is Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net. Welcome to this short YouTube vlog and sort of mini lesson on posture and guitar posture. The reason I published this is because I noticed while starting to work with students that posture and, you know, guitar positioning, how to use the strap is one of the first things we address because I watch your videos and I go, oh, yeah, you gotta fix this. And the good news for you is it's gonna take you a minute to fix this now and it can have a lot of impact on the way you practice, uh, whether you get RSI, uh, repetitive strain injury, or whether you get tendonitis, or if you can have better technique and more fluid playing, and it, it, it's free of cost. Like, you just have to sit down and make sure you're in a good position. Uh, so I'll go and walk through, through the main three things that I see happen with my new students. And it's fun because this is regardless of style, regardless of which chords or song you play or scales, uh, this goes with you in the way you hold the instrument. And uh, let's just get going with some of the basic tips and I'll talk to you right after. Okay, so tip number one with the guitar positioning. The first thing I notice is that a lot of students, their guitar is too horizontal. It's like that when they, they are playing. It's hard to show on camera here and they will sit down and they'll have the same problems, which means they have to reach further down and this will encompass like some elbow flares and some shoulder issues and they can tense up here, right? So that's the first thing you have to do is to figure out a way that your guitar is not totally horizontal, nor does it need to be vertical. It really needs to be somewhere around the middle. And I'll give you my quick tip when you're sitting down to get this. So while sitting down, I imagine my guitar fretboard being in a line like that. I will put the headstock at a point that is across of a line. Breast, pocket, straight line, and straight line from above my knee, and there's this point in space, and this is where the headstock goes. So it's not too far. People say, oh, you need the guitar up. No, 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 it doesn't need to be up, and it doesn't need to be far like that. It doesn't need to be completely up. It doesn't need to be horizontal. It needs to be somewhere here. And that's how I play. So I'll just stand up again to show you. Now on camera, it really appears as if my, my fretboard is totally lined up with the camera. It is, but my body is not. So my body is more looking at this. If my body was straight towards the camera, you'd see this. So you see how the, the guitar is um, at, there's a still a length of space between this and that. If it was close to my body, it would be like that. But now my arm, my elbow is just falling out where it should be. And I basically just raise my hand up and that's where the, the fretboard is. Here we go. So that's really the first tip for positioning the guitar is finding a good position for the body for, for this to happen. So my second tip for the guitar position and posture is about the guitar strap. So even when people say, I only play sitting down, Mark, I don't need to wear one. I will go, no, I beg to differ, you should wear one. And here's the thing, it will help keep the guitar in balance where you want it in space so you don't have to hold it number one, and number two, a great gauge to see if you're at the right height, and it works for me perfectly, is to find out if you're sitting down. If I do stand up, you're gonna notice the guitar is exactly in the same spot with regards to my body. It's in, I'm pretty close to the camera now, so it's hard for you to, to see that, but the point is if I sit down, the positioning of my right and left hand does not change. You could, you know, uh, film me from afar and see whether I'm standing or sitting, the relative positioning of the, the guitar is the same. So that's a really healthy way to use a strap. Even if you wanna play, always play sitting, it, it is a great way to do it. And in passing, I mentioned that a lot of the students I see, the first thing I seek is their guitar posture and how we can adjust it. And I have one more tip for you, but I wanted to drop in passing. If you're interested in working with me, please be sure to check the link in the description below to schedule a call, I can look at your goals and see how it fits with this Jazz Guitar Accelerator program, which is basically a distilled journey of <laughs> everything I did. I did a lot of mistakes, you know, uh, a start and stop and type of thing. So everything I learned about guitar and jazz and everything I learned about guitar to coach myself and start teaching others, I distilled it into a really sharp program of 16 weeks. So just check the description the below, the, the link in the description to book a call. Again, it's called the Jazz Guitar Accelerator. So let's go to the third tip. All right, my third tip for the positioning on the guitar is relating to your wrist and the wrist for your fretting hand. A lot of people will assume that what you need to do is something like that, that you need to do this or to avoid doing that. But actually, that's quite incorrect. So the biggest problem I see jazz guitarists have is they will do this too much. So actually, their issue is not that, it's this. Uh, pronation, supination, I forgot, I forgot which one. 
but they will do that. And the result is, in a way, you're making your fingers shorter because they have less reach, right? If you're here, instead of no neutral, you're making this pinky have way less reach and you're eff effectively squeezing the fingerboard. So showing you this on camera, it's like if this part of your hand is touching, you're in big trouble because then you'll have a hard time positioning and then you can solve this simply by letting the fingering breathe a little bit, letting the fretboard breathe. So you ensure there's a space between that part and that part of the guitar. If you're close here, hmm. That's why the thumb, people say, oh, your thumb should be behind the neck. The thumb is just a pivot, because if you're here, you know you're in trouble because you're too close. So if the thumb is somewhere along the back side or along the middle, which it will shift sometimes like this or like that, of course. But if it's here, you're, you're in luck because your wrist should be pretty neutral. So the third tip is about this is neutral wrist means <laughs> people think, oh, so long as I'm not doing that too much, I should be fine. But actually people wind up doing the opposite. And I used to do that all the time. You can see my videos, my, my thumb is like sticking out like this. So make sure you have close to a neutral grip. By neutral grip, I really mean a neutral wrist. So close to neutral. Neutral is about here. So not too much, not too much. All right, guys, this is a fundamental like jazz guitar technique and just guitar technique overall video. One more thing you have to watch for tensions. Uh, I, I'm not like, I want to talk. I, I have a lot of tensions in my neck and shoulders sometimes. But one thing you can do is pick up the guitar and just play and breathe and just sort of do spot checks on your tension. Is my neck tense? Is my finger tense? Is this tense? You can just do it and play. Regardless of what song you play, you can just do a bit of it and relax and see how it goes. And also watch out for the unnecessary movements, such as elbow flares are biggie in my students, right? And unnecessary movements of the flying finger syndrome, so watch for that. And there's a bunch of things you can watch out for so you become a more uh, efficient guitar player. You can play things faster, smoother, and again, checking on your, your strap positioning, checking on this guitar thing, the first tip I gave you and checking on your wrist, on your neutral wrist, it takes a minute, but if you do it, it's going to work wonders throughout your playing, which is of course my goal through this whole jazzcarsons.net endeavor since 2009. I've been publishing these videos on YouTube and these blog posts, so there's plenty more blogs about songs and scales and how to play jazz and the guitar. So hopefully I will see you soon on this channel. Please like and subscribe. Uh, again, please book a call with me below in the link, and I will see you soon in the next video. Take care. Bye. Thank you.